today we're off to Santa Barbara. We're gonna see Ashley Henning's studio. I first became aware of Ashley in 2013. I hosted a New York workshop and Ashley flew from California to New York. She's really active in my group. I've gotten to follow the progression of her career. So I wanna get a real look at the energy in her space and how big it is and what the light's like. I really just wanna see her being the boss of her own space. I'm so excited to see Ashley's space today. 26, Ashley Taylor. This is surreal and exciting. I have watched Sue since her first Creative Live and I've been lucky enough to attend in-person workshops and learn from her. But the whole reason I have this space is because of everything she's taught me. So the idea that she would come to my studio is kind of mind-blowing and I need to keep pinching myself to make sure that I didn't just make this up in my head and this is actually happening. Well, show me this space. Okay, well, it's only 300 square feet. The whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing, the two rooms together. It's tiny. <laughs> oh, it's so tiny. So it is small, but I can still show you all the all right. things that I do Show in us here. how you make it work. Cool, so this is my flower wall. That's your happy wall. Yeah, this is my happy cover girl wall. Ashley's energy is always very bubbly and the first thing I fell in love with when I met Ashley in my first workshop was her laugh and you're gonna hear it a lot and it is so beautiful <laughs> it is so perfect. I have V flats here. I signed the lease in July of 2013 when I walked into this space it was everything that was in my mind because I knew I didn't need much more than a bedroom sized room and I just needed an amazing light source and this is obviously my natural light source and I shoot into the backlight this is my little mini Sue Bryce vintage gallery wall and right here is canvas backdrops it could give you a little glimpse of them I painted this one it's the like DIY uh, canvas that Sue taught us. I really had fun like experimenting with the colors and it was so cool watching the video on the education site to learn how to do this. For someone that's that bubbly, I think what you don't get with Ashley straight away is how self-contained she is and how strong she is because she's little but she's fierce. And then um, I have this like kind of sexy flowery one Beautiful. from Drop It Modern. Um, and then this one is just like the black chalkboard. Oh, that's one of my favorites, right? Yeah, I love this one. And I see you've got a great little rig there, Ashley, and how you put that up on the oh, ceiling. Oh, yeah. We actually, because this is a drop ceiling that you can't put too much weight into, so my father-in-law was really smart and ended up getting wood and painted it white to match the ceiling, and he just cut the same size panels, and then he put them in so they'd have this kind of hidden um, roller system that wouldn't take up a lot of space in the studio. Even though it's tiny, you've got yeah. a good depth there, right? What lens are you predominantly shooting? 50 or 35. Okay. So it's really just 35 for curves, but 50 almost any other time. So you've got enough time. great little depth in here. Yeah. And you've got fairly good storage? Um, yeah, do you want me to show you? Sure. It's kind of packed full. <laughs> I used to be a wedding photographer, so I have old albums in there and just supplies for everything. I keep fancy shopping bags that I send my clients home with after their reveals in And there. how big's your airbed, the one that you've got in so there? So this is a full-size, queen-size airbed. It's like all encompassing in a suitcase. Um, and it's got like a sturdy frame, but you can see that it's in there. And so I just can pull this out and plug it in and um, set it up whenever I need a sexy glam shoot. It works really well since I can just roll it away and tuck it in there. The strategy is just to try to maximize the space, kind of like an HGTV show where they're talking about those tiny houses. It's like maximize the space and give everything multiple functions if you can, or just make it um, so that everything has a really solid purpose that is going to be used very intentionally. Having that limit around you can almost make you more creative because you really have to make the best of what you have. 
Oh, look at your clothes. You've got a yeah. makeup area. So this is the hair and makeup room. This is my studio wardrobe rack. How long have you been collecting wardrobe? Really only this year. And then I made this tulle skirt per your instructions and I tea stained it. Um, my mother-in-law's a seamstress, so she actually did this tulle skirt a long time ago when I thought it had to be more complicated, but I actually like this one that I DIY'd so much more because it's fuller. Awesome. And then I have like some vintage furs that used to be my grandma's. This robe is like one of my favorite things because I do a lot of like sexier shoots, so it's like fringy and nice. fun. And I have a flower crown that my friend who is a florist who made the flower wall Beautiful. made. Yeah. So it's, it's big, but it's like very Vogue Vanity Fair when it's on and I really like it. I'm absolutely blown away. I feel in my body very comfortable here. I feel like I'm in a loving space. I love that there's nothing threatening in here. It's just so down to earth and it has so much attractive energy in it. Like just being in here, you don't want to leave and that's a space you want to create for clients. And then this over here is my viewing area and reveal wall and meeting space for when I have clients in for a consultation. Obviously when it's their reveal, I take all those pictures down and put their reveal pictures up. Um, and then I also put the reveal pictures like on the couch because they don't all fit on the wall. Um, and this is my hair and makeup station on this side of the room. So that's Cheryl, my hair and makeup artist, and Mandy getting her hair and makeup done, my client. Hi girls, thanks for letting us invade your shoot today. <laughs> I only have one hair and makeup station and sometimes that's a bummer for me because if you want to speed things up and have multiple women in here at a time, then you kind of need two makeup stations because if you have more than two people, it could take all day to shoot them. I also have my reveal wall in the same room, which it works pretty well because usually only one to two people come to a reveal. When I had the generation shoot, four people came to the reveal and I was stressed when they walked through the door because that room's even smaller than this one. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, how is this gonna work? But you know what? Everyone crammed in and they were so excited about their pictures that they didn't say anything. They were just like impressed with the pictures. It's crazy. I'm and probably 10 times more emotional than I actually considered that I would be right now. But walking into this space brings me back to my first year. I can never talk about that first year without crying. The most amount of physical and personal and spiritual transformation that I went through as a human being, learning to value my craft myself enough to actually receive money for it. So watching people create a sustainable income from a little room just blows my mind. I'm I, I they're like it's like having kids. I'm just incredibly proud. All right, let's get shooting. Okay. Gorgeous. I love that. Beautiful. Bring that shoulder, but then, yeah, right, oh, right there. That's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love that. The light in here is amazing. Yeah, Ash. isn't it? I love it so much. And it's good all day because of the bounce. Like, till, yeah, off till that the sun top. goes. Yeah, it's so amazing. That's why I like never want to leave here. That's why I'm like, maybe I'll sign five years. The light bouncing off the roof and coming in here is just so magical. It's a soft box. Yeah, all day, perfect lighting. It's not like I have to come in at a certain time and make it work. And so to me, when I first saw this space and I walked in and I saw that window, I was like, this is it. This is what I need. I don't need anything more than just this right here. You don't need anything more. Yeah. That, that is the truth, right? You yeah. do not need anything more. I mean, it would be great to have right. five times the space. Right. But you're doing this three years. Yeah, and just this. Basically, this is the only room I shoot in, so just this little room. And it's perfect because it's just, like, you always teach just the corner pretty much. So you don't really, unless I have the bed out, that's really the only time it gets tight in here. So you do shoot a lot of sexy glam, a lot of boudoir style. So the airbag comes out with just about every shoot? Yeah, almost every shoot. I would say, like, eight times out of ten. Lately this year, people have been more into just staying in their clothes and not their underwear, so more traditional, like, portrait. Um, so in, in that situation, I would never take out the bed. Soft smile right through your eyes, beautiful. And then look down over your shoulder, and then eyes down. Yeah, and then, like, a little giggle. <laughs> 
So how much rent do you pay for this space? I pay $800 a month. Oh, that's so affordable. How often would you shoot per week and how often would you like to be shooting per week? Right now I'm shooting about three to four times a month, so almost once per week. And I would definitely like to do about five to six per month. What time of the day do you start shooting? I typically start at 10 a.m., but it's not really for lighting reasons. It's just for I'm not a morning person reasons and I can't really get here on time until We well, have a child, a small yeah. child, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Open this, and then I'm actually, oh wait, wait, nope, we're gonna just keep it in this corner. Okay. We're gonna do something different. You're a makeup artist, and you are the only two people on your team. You don't work with another assistant. Does she stay and assist for all of your shoots? Yeah, so I pay her $200, but that's also because she always stays through the entire shoot through the end. She'll also like change up the hair and makeup throughout the shoot, which is something that I pitch to my clients, and she always stays and zhuzhes them. Maybe you can like kind of do this back and forth. You're just gonna kind of like go like this and like look up at me and then look down and just like have fun with it. Yeah. Be like really smiley though, because it's gonna look better here. And then really like move so the fringes move. Yeah. And then look down with your eyes. Yeah, right there. Oh, that was really good. It looks really good. That looks really good. That looks really good. That looks really good. I love that. And then smiling up at me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so fun. So obviously small space means less stuff yeah. and that's something we get stuck with because everyone tries to buy more, you don't have props, you don't have chairs, yeah. you've got apple boxes, do you get stuck with the try not to get too much stuff in here, minimalize it? Yeah. I don't buy any furniture because I don't have room for it. I don't want to be like scooting things all day. I feel like I do enough of that. How you use this room is super incredible. and. You know, at the end of the day, this is working for you and it's yeah. been three years and you've really honed it. Do you want a bigger space? Um, I'm not going to lie that there are times where I see someone's bigger space and I think, oh, what could I do with that bigger space? And every once in a while I'll get like an inquiry for um, a larger family. Like I just did a generation shoot with a grandma, a mom, and like an eight-year-old daughter. And in that here? Was, yeah. In the space? Yeah. And it was really fun to but do that. But that's easy. Three is good because you've got a yeah. nice tight, I can do three in a corner. Right? Yeah. Three is good. I've had a couple inquiries where they wanted to do like six and I started stressing out about that. The truth is though, you're a wedding photographer. Yeah. So you know how to shoot Go on location. location. Yeah. So that for you is a big option if yeah. they have a house that you could shoot on location. Exactly. Or Santa Barbara is just such a beautiful natural place. Like we have a gorgeous ocean and mesa and all this stuff that we could also go and get some of the landscape in town. A huge takeaway for me a long time ago was that sometimes we get really bored with our shooting stations, yeah. but our clients don't. And actually it's the consistency that I like about it too, is being able to come in here with a game plan and knowing my space so well now and knowing what I can do. Instead of, I used to shoot in hotel rooms before I had a studio space. And that was always stressful because I never knew what I was walking into. Your ultimate scenario is you finish up shooting and you've got an office set up at home for yeah. your post-production. Exactly. Um, so I have a, a spare bedroom in my house that I just use as my office and it's got my computer and everything. So I'll always take my camera home at the end of a shoot and my cards and I'll load it and um, call it right away. And then I actually have a retoucher. So I send off the images that I select to her and then she sends them back to me and then I al use alien skin um, and then send it to print because I, I don't do printing at home because my home office is quite small. Um, it's probably smaller than this room. And then I get the prints back from the lab the next day though and then I can do the reveal pretty quickly. And they're always coming back to this space for your reveal. Yeah. How many years in business, Ash? I've had the studio three years, but I almost consider this year in a way, like my first year of committing to doing portraits full time. So it's this weird thing of having been in business as a photographer for seven years, but then this being in a way like my first year of really committing to making this business model work as a full time income. What was your average wedding sale? It was 4,000 at the end. Okay. So um, actually, the last two weddings I booked were 5,500, but those were the last two. And yeah. then 
um, I didn't want to, you know, do it anymore. So you were driving your prices up to not get bookings, but people were still booking. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay. And then I, and then I had to show up, and I was like, now I have to do this. <laughs> Maybe I should have charged more. But it's so, hard when you, yeah. even when the money's coming and your heart's not in it. Yeah, it's really hard. That's why I took yeah. them off my website. Cause it was just, and if I get an inquiry, I just refer it to my old second shooter because she still really loves doing it. So I see it a lot. People transition out of wedding photography. Yeah. Why? Because it was getting really stressful and I would come home from weddings with migraines and in so much pain and um, it gets really hot here in Southern, you know, in Santa Barbara when I shoot weddings a lot of times. So it'd be like 100 degrees and I would get dehydrated and sometimes I'd like come home and I'd just be so sick that I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. This isn't fun. And for me, I realized what I'm so happy doing is being with a woman and making her feel so beautiful and just seeing that instant connection. What's the hardest thing about letting go of weddings and just doing portrait? Um, the financial security sense of it. Um, with a wedding, obviously people just look for you and they're like, oh, you're a wedding photographer, you're on my budget, I like your work, I'll hire you. And it's not super complicated to get clients knocking on your door. And with this, it's a lot of putting yourself out there and I can be kind of a homebody and kind of shy and like to hide behind my computer. So that is the hardest part for me is like, okay, I need to commit to getting these clients for myself. They're not just going to show up on my door from Google or Wedding Wire um, subscription. They're Actually, I just need to actually put myself out there. How are you doing that? Um, so I do it a lot of different ways. I go to a lot of networking, like women's networking groups. I'm part of um, NABO, which is up here, National Association of Women Business Owners. This year, I also joined Junior League, which is a women's volunteering organization. It's um, They have chapters all over the country, and it's really big here in Santa Barbara. And it's all pretty well-to-do women because they have time to be volunteering. So my main thing is just meeting as many women as possible. Also, because I have a child, I met a lot of moms through having him and I would say like maybe 25% of my clients this year were either a mom that I met or a friend of a mom that I met through having my son. That's pretty so, cool because yeah. a lot of people feel more clipped when they have children yeah and yet you're getting a lot of your clients from having a child exactly when you think about the evolution of your income mm -hmm. what is your average portrait sale now so my average sale right now is two thousand dollars and what uh, how did you get up to that like what where did you start like if you look back over the last three years or four years mm -hmm. um, did you plateau at different levels or did you do a fast incline um I would say it was a an incline I don't know if it was fast <laughs> like before I found you on creative life I was still shooting I know you don't like this word but I was shooting boudoir photography because I was a wedding photographer yeah. so my brides would ask for it and I was when I think back on it it was insane it was like it started with $200 seven years ago and then it went to like 500 and then like 750 for 50 images on a disc and they weren't really retouched that well. And then I saw your creative live and I really was interested in pursuing the in-person sales. And that was also before you had like talked about a reveal wall. So it was more just showing people yeah. digitally. And I remember the first couple sales were really scary because it was just, I didn't know how it was gonna go. But actually like, I think the first one might've been a dud. And then quickly, like after that, within the first five, I was making like $1,000 a sale. And at that point, like to make $1,000 was mind blowing. And so then I just like crept my prices up a little bit at a time for a while. And then um, I actually, last year, I had a higher average sale last year. I actually had $2,500, but I was only doing about 50% of the shoots. So the clients were highly qualified when they came in and they were really ready to spend. And this year I've been trying to cast a wider net. So I have had, I will be honest, like I have had two sales this year that were, one was like $500 and one was like $200. It's an average. Exactly. I've also had ones that were $4,000. So yeah. that's why it averaged out to 2,000. So the good thing about averaging out to 2,000 is you have cast a wider net, which means more referrals, yeah. which means more clients. Walk me through your price list. A folio box with six images starts at $1,545. 
And then the next package up is $2,195 and that is 12 images. And then I also give them a Sticky Albums phone app for that. And um, they're always getting the digital files with it, but um, the phone app is just like a cool little cheap thing to throw in and kind of make more for more, as you say. <laughs> um, and then the next package up is 20 images and that's $2,595. It gets the video, which has all their images in it and the phone app. And then my seat, there's like a package even bigger than that, but my secret that you taught me is that with that platinum package. So I show them the reveal wall and I usually show 25 images, not 20. I tell them if you go with that top package, I'm gonna just give you everything that's here. So ever since you taught me that this year, I have sold my top package quite a lot because people just are like, oh, okay. I don't have to choose. I'll like, take everything. Yeah, I'll just take everything. What do you charge okay. for a sitting? This year I've gone through quite an evolution with my sitting and I, right now I'm not doing a sitting fee, I'm doing a cancellation fee. So that just means that they're giving me a credit card number to hold for the day. And if they cancel two weeks out from the shoot, I will charge them 350. But if they don't cancel two weeks out for the shoot, all they're paying for is the prints. So it's kind of a modified version of the voucher. I used to do a sitting fee that was $350 and this might be my own confidence issue, but I kept feeling like people were like, I have to pay $350 and then I have to pay for the prices. So that's when I, I actually took it away and made it complimentary. And then I was finding that I was getting a lot, not a lot, but more cancellations than I was comfortable with. So now I just tell people it's like a risk-free scenario. As long as you don't cancel on me, I'm gonna take the best pictures that you've seen of your life. You see, the thing is, is when you say it, I believe what you're saying, because yeah. I know you believe this. And, yeah. and that's the lesson in this. Yeah, exactly. For anyone out there, the lesson in this is that she says it in a way that is wholeheartedly, you believe this, you back this up, this is risk-free, provided you don't cancel on me, you say it fluidly, yeah. you, you don't hesitate, like you've said it, you're doing it, and that works for you. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. Do you willingly give that to strangers? Um, I actually haven't given it to strangers, but I do give it to them to take home every time they come into the consultation and I have a PDF, you know, it's part of my PDF that I send them. What's your ratio to in-person consultation versus phone consultation? Um, I'm fine with either. So I just, I try to get them to the in-person consultation if they live locally. Um, but I also get a lot of clients from um, an hour and a half north of here all the way down to LA, cause I used to be from LA. So if they live far away, I'm not gonna make them come for an in-person consultation. I just feel like, you know, if they could see the space that just makes it all the more real for them to see the wardrobe and all that stuff makes it more tangible. What do you give away to your clients? Well, I'll give away to your potential clients. This is your beautiful cantilever card. Yeah, that was like pre-magazine. I should be better at handing those out. Now what I do is I keep my magazine, um, and this is Shauna's template. Um, I keep it in my purse and whenever I'm at a networking group or just talking to anyone or someone mentions that I'm a photographer, I take this out and I show it to them. And how successful do you think your magazine is in terms of the response to the people looking at it? Uh, people freak out. They're like, a lot of times people don't understand that they're my pictures and that it's not like a actual <laughs> magazine. So I have to like keep explaining. I'm like, no, 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 I took all those pictures and this is what I do for people. And they like, it takes like sometimes three times. Like I have to... my own magazine. Yeah, they're like, oh, Where did wait. you print your magazine? Matt Cloud. Because it's beautiful quality, like satin. <laughs> Pages, yeah, it's yeah. really nice. Um, how much did you pay for your magazine? This one is about nine dollars because I have a lot of pages. Mine's ten. Yeah, yeah and then I, I started adding more pages to the next one that I'm gonna do, so. Uh, They're addictive, aren't <laughs> yeah. they? It's addictive and you just, as your portfolio grows and you have more stuff, you want to put more in it. And I like having that, I have, I know some people split up the genres, but I like to have all my different genres in one magazine. So, cause you never know who you're gonna meet and show it to. So, cause sometimes people look at it and they're really not interested in lingerie, but I love that. Like, I'm like, oh, well I have a young family in here or I have like a yep. mother daughter. So I have so many different things that I can just show you in this one magazine. I don't have to like fish for different magazines. Talk to me about product. What are your favorite products to sell? Um, so I have, since I moved to the reveal wall, I do the folio box. Where do you and, buy your folio box? Um, so I actually get BRI folio boxes, Black River Imaging, and um, I'm actually doing the ready mat mats, which is this one. But this was um, a sample uh, Fineo mat from a really long time ago. I had a whole set of them that I just keep here, but like this is, so you can, there is a quality difference, but 
clients it's pretty notice. clients don't really notice and this is like two dollars versus i think five dollars yeah yeah so i right now since i'm at a two thousand dollar average and not a thirty five hundred dollar average i go a little cheaper but it's still a really nice quality and, and no one notices and it's still archival and, stuff. and you have an album yeah so this is really cool. Um, this is by Seldex too, and they- Fineo Seldex. Well, you can't yeah. get it from- no. Oh, well, you can get it from Fineo, but they, so this is the key is, they have to, if you're in the United States, order 10 at a time. So right. I split with another um, Sue Bryce education oh, member. Um, so that way we didn't have to, you know, invest 1800, yeah. They're $185 each. But um, what it is, is, a it's slip in seven a slip by ten. In seven by ten. So, if every once in a while, because I do lingerie shoots, people are very committed to the black book idea, and they're like, "No, that's too big. I don't want it." And yeah. they get all. So, if I printed a reveal, I can just slip slide them out and slip slide it them in into here, there. and it's done deal. And then, and the thing is, because it's twenty um, images, they have to go they with have the top to buy it. package. I love it. So, one hundred and eighty-five dollars. Yeah. And the only thing catch is that you have to buy 10. But if you just can hook up with another Sue Bryce education person and split it, split it, it's really easy to do that. Perfect. Yeah. It's amazing, Ash. Are you selling many wall portraits? Um, so I have sold the gallery series is over there, the nine up. Um, I have sold quite a few of those ever since I started putting it into the space and showing people. And I always make sure that I ask them at the consultation or prior to the shoot if they like that because I learned the hard way that if you don't shoot correctly for it, you're not gonna sell it. Good girl. I wanna show this because I introduced this um, years ago into my business, yeah. maybe 2006. Um, I call it the nine up because to me it was a nine up frame. I don't know why I called it nine up, but mm -hmm. it caught on. Um, when I initially started to teach and I told people about the nine up, the goal with the nine up, if you haven't ever seen this before, is that it's built for a series of images, not nine holes of nine different shots from one shoot. It, if you shoot for this, it's designed to be mm. a series of one outfit. And I learned that really early that yeah. I could put nine different photos in there, but it just sold every time if I, and I really focused my mind around the idea that it was kind of a photo booth. Yeah. That I was doing like a fun series of images or a playful series of images or a laughing series of images of expression mm -hmm. or dancing mm -hmm. or movement or if there was a couple or two yeah. sisters, I could get them laughing, tickling each other, stupid stuff or and so depending on what my client was like depended on the final product and it just sold and yeah. but like you said you have to shoot for it what do you sell your nine out for um this is uh 1895 framed uh yeah and, and it, it's a yeah matted i do a black frame this is a custom frame but i just do like a plain black frame for my clients so um i can see that you're doing so much in your business i could see you could be doing so much more obviously but yeah. what you're you're like nikki you're very focused on a style and a genre that's selling really well and yeah. hitting that average and, and exactly the same. In fact, your studios are so similar and it's absolutely perfect. It's working for both of you. Yeah. I love. I mean, I really love it. This has been like the best journey, and I'm so excited for next year. I'm ner I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's a part of me that's nervous. Like, oh my god, I did it once. Can I do it again? But I know that I can. Deep down, I just need to, you know, always constantly come back to what I did do. And I know if I was able to do something, I can always do it again. Okay, so I'm gonna finish off with some quick fire questions that okay. I want you to answer. Work-life balance, what does that look like for you? Um, I am one of the very lucky people that my in-laws are retired and they live here in town with me, so I luckily don't have to pay for childcare and they watch him while I'm working. So that is like a true blessing. Also, my husband's very involved. I am kind of a workaholic, I will be honest. Um, I try really hard to not work in the evenings when they come home. I try really hard not to work on the weekends. I'm not always successful at that. And it's something that I'm still, I'm still struggling with, but I'm hoping that I can continue to work, walk down the path of being a little more balanced with things. Because otherwise you just feel overwhelmed yeah. quite easily, right? Yeah, that's, I would say the hardest thing about this year and being toward the end of the year was I think I hit like a little bit of a wall of like, not quite burnout because I still love what I do so much, but just feeling like, 
oh my gosh. Cause like with weddings, there's a slow season. So you like work, 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 and then you get like a rest and then you work, work, work. And I feel like with the portrait model, you're always kind of hustling for clients and getting clients and cog. yeah Turn the cog. <laughs> so it got to a little point where I was like oh man turning this cog is getting easier but it's also I'm a little tired so um that kind of real made me realize like I need to take care of myself and I need to you know just drink more water and be more vigilant about feeding myself I'm kind of one of those people that can forget to eat at, until like 4 p.m or forget to drink water until 4 p.m so I just think for me I just need to be more um, attentive to myself and it'll correct the problem. In the last three years, what's made you more confident? Oh gosh. Um, I think just having have done it, if that makes sense. Like the validation just of like, someone's spent $2,500. Oh, okay, someone did that, that's fine. Or like, I booked a client or I booked four this month. Like once I do it, it just kind of validates that I can do it and then I have more confidence in myself. What's the highest sale you've ever done? 4,000. How did you feel? I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, I was like, almost a part of me was like, is this real? Is she gonna call and want her money back? But she like raved about it and loved the whole experience. What makes you the most excited? I think when someone says that they hate having their photograph taken and that they're, they don't look good in photos. Because I know that I'm gonna prove them wrong and that like really, I like that challenge and I like that excitement. It's not as fun if someone's like, oh, I'm pretty fun to photograph. <laughs> like that's not as fun for me. What do you think is the one thing people like the most about you when they meet you as a photographer? Um, I feel like because I'm giggly and just like a lighthearted person, people tend to like that about me and feel comfortable and safe with me. So I don't know, I think it's just something about my like bubbly, smiley energy that draws people in. A lot of people out there starting up, a lot of people in the first two years, yeah. a lot of people are gonna look at this space and be shocked by the size of it. Yeah. Not gonna lie, yeah. almost, <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly. five foot two. You know, um, my my wingspan, just yeah. that you, you're in a tiny space. You're making this work. Yeah. Um, what advice have you got for them? Um, I would say to just go for it. Like I see so many people in the Facebook group like hemming and hawing over can they make it happen or they just can't make it happen. And honestly, like the only thing that stops you is you and you just at some point have to say, this is what I want. And like you say, certainty and conviction, I'm just going to go for it. And I'm just gonna put myself out there. The other thing I'd say is like, you don't arrive at a place, at least for me, you don't arrive at a place where one day you feel like a rock star and you're like, I'm just so confident. Everything goes my way all the time. I saw people like tell me to my face, like you charge what? And it hurts. Mm, and same. I still have like, you know, days where I feel like I'm never going to get another booking and I like feel awful like I can be kind of dramatic I guess but I also have a lot of days where I'm that's like that's your theater background yes exactly <laughs> and then I also have a lot of days where I'm like I'm doing that. like I'm, I'm doing, doing this like I look at my spreadsheet of because I kept a spreadsheet of every single shoot and keeping the average and everything and I look at it and I'm like this has happened like so I read a lot and the other night I read that um, we're always working towards the future, mm -hmm. but even tomorrow it's going to be now. It's kind of like when I was having my son, the midwife kept saying, I kept saying, I can't do this. And she's like, every minute you are doing this. Like you, you're actually yeah. physically in it. So you don't need to say that you're, you can't do it because you are. And that's kind of how I feel about this. Like every minute I'm actually walking forward and I'm doing it. So even on the hard days, I can still do it. Tell me is uh, two shoots at $2,000 equivalent to a $4,000 wedding for you emotionally, physically? Oh, I would say it's it's not equivalent because this is easier and more fun and I enjoy it more. A wedding is something that like I have a little dread inside of me when I have to shoot it now. And um, I would shoot more than five a month if I could balance with home life and my child. And then I'm still not quite confident that I could get that many bums and seats, but if I could wrap my mind around that and do it, I would be so happy. I love like being here. Every time I walk up the steps to my studio, it feels like a dream come true. Cause I had this studio for two years where I wasn't doing it full time. And every day I would say to myself, oh, if only I could do this full time, if only I could give up wedding. So it was that simple of just Have you done your it. last winning ish Oh yeah, I did it at the beginning of the year. You're a full-time portrait photographer. Yeah. <laughs> With an average sale of $2,000. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's and you do, this, year. you do this $2,000 a day. Exactly. So it's, it's, 
it's really an incredible, like I can't thank you enough because this is really like a dream come true for me to be doing what I love. And, and also, like I said, to see how much of a difference it makes for my clients. Like that makes me feel like I'm actually doing something really worthwhile with my time. And what's your goal now for next year? What numbers? So my goal is 60 next year. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that, that's about five shoots a month um, for 12 months. Um, and I've, if I kept it at 2,000, I would be really happy because that's over 100 grand in, um, it's 120,000 grand. Yeah. So that would be, you know what I mean? Like that would be awesome yeah. if I could do that. So that's, that's my goal. I'm not really trying to necessarily uh, grow my average sale right now. I'm just trying to get more, more and more bums on seats. Are you prepared for me to challenge you to do something next year? Sure. I want you to write 60 photo shoots. Okay. With an average sale of 2,400. Cool. On a piece of paper. Okay. And I want you to read it every day. Okay. And then I want you to go out and I want you to provide that service for 60 women next year. I want to do that. Yeah, and I want you to focus on that number. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that sometimes when you feel afraid, you have to go back to the fact that all I know is there are 60 women in the Santa Barbara area that are going to have a day with you doing this for themselves. And you deserve that and they need that. Yes. And you need to go and find those 60 women because everything about you is a gift and if you understand that you're going to find that really easily and this time next year we'll see how long it takes you to get to 60. I'm excited. I'm so proud of you, Ashley. Thank you. I really can't thank you enough for all the continuing education and everything since going back to that first Creative Live because I, I really will say it. I like tuned in on a whim and it to totally changed my life. So it's incredible. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like there's about 10 more things Ashley could be doing. Part of me as a person, as Sue Bryce, wants to drive and drive people to be more, bigger, faster, harder, earn more, be more. And then I have to remember that she has a husband and a baby that need her. She has a life and, you know, not everybody needs to be bigger and more and more. Uh, what she's doing here, she has the capacity to make $120,000 and balance a child and a husband and a life. That's extraordinary. Uh, she can take it to whatever level that she needs. People always tell me, wow, you can do so much in this room. I can't believe it on your website or your studio looks so big because you have so much variety. I think it does impress them that I can create so much variety in just this one little room, basically. Ashley's space is pure proof that you can make this work anywhere with good light and good energy. Like Ashley said, you have to want it and then you have to actually go after it. The work you can create in this little light box is just perfect. No excuses, there's no excuses. Be prepared to have bad days, have good days. If you want this, you're gonna find a way. And if you don't want this, you'll find a way to fail at it. But if you want it, it's here. And this is proof to me, this is just proof. It shouldn't matter, but it was like a really big validation for me of how far I've come that she would want to see my space. And it was a really amazing moment of pride that I would be able to show my space. So yeah, that was really cool. Cool. Thank you so much. I can't believe this day. <laughs>